Hi, welcome to this video tutorial. Um, we're going to look at the use of start bits, stop bits and parity bits. So when you're transmitting serial information, bits one at a time, and the receiver and the transmitter are not synchronized, it's important to tell the receiver where your byte of information, when your byte of information is starting and when it's finished. Otherwise, the receiver will just receive a stream of bits and won't know which is which bit, which are the bytes, which bits are part of one byte. So what we've got here, we're going to transmit a byte in hexadecimal at 0x d6, which in binary is 11010110. Now when you transmit, you transmit the most significant bit first. So if this is a time axis, d7 needs to be on the left hand side because it's transmitted first earlier in time. So that's the byte we're going to transmit. So we've got a pulse which is high, high, low, high, low, high, high, low. But before that, we put a start bit, which is a low, to tell the receiver when that byte is about to uh, arrive. And at the end, we put two stop bits, which are always high. After the byte, we put something called a parity bit as well, which we'll have a look at in a moment. So if you receive a whole stream of information, a whole stream of bits, like um, the second line down here, um, it just looks like a stream of ones and zeros, but the receiver will be able to work out where the bytes are. Because you always finish with two stop bits, so there's the finish of the preceding byte. You start with a, a, a start bit, which is low. You have the eight bits of the byte, of the information, followed by one parity bit. Then the two stop bits for that byte. Then the start bit for the next byte. Then the next byte, the next eight bits, then the parity bit, then the new... Uh, the next um, two stop bits. So by looking for this pattern of 110, 110, 110 throughout the whole stream of bits you'll be able to work out where the bytes are. So if we go back here um, you'll see the low start bit and the two stop bits which are always high and, and, and the start bits are always low according to our syllabus the way we look at it. What about this parity bit? Well parity bit is a way of checking um, whether there's any error in the data. So in this case um, even parity is being used. So um, we've got one, two, three, four, five bits which are high. Now with parity what you do is you count the number of bits which are high. In this case we've got one, two, three, four, five. If even parity is used then you use this parity bit to make sure you've got an even number of bits. So we need to make the parity bit high, and that gives us an extra one to give us six ones, six highs, an even number. And that allows you to error check the byte. So um, a parity bit is added to the eight data bits. If you use even parity, because there's two parity systems, then that will make the total number of ones in the byte, including the parity bit, even. If you use odd parity, which is a different system, then that would make the total number of ones odd. So in this case, look, you can see odd parity has been used because we've got one, two, three, four bits which are one. Um, if we want to use odd parity, we need an odd number of ones. So we make the parity bit high, and that will give us five ones. So that's odd parity. Parity. So the transmitter would tell the receiver what parity system they're using. If we look in the same example with the same byte being transmitted here, look. We've got one zero zero one one zero one. We've got four ones. If you were going to transmit with even parity, you'd want an even number of ones, so the parity bit would remain low, so you still have four ones. So if we turn over the page, um, here's a chance, if we look at diagram number four, here's a chance for you to pause this and think through yourself. So even parity has been used here. So if the transmitter told the receiver that used in e even parity, and if the parity bit was high, as received by uh, as received by the receiver, and if the receiver did one and a one here, and all zeros for the other bits, is there an error in the byte? So you, you pause it and think about that. Well, if even parity has been used, then including the parity bit, there should be an even number of ones. But we've got one, two, including the parity bit, we've got three ones. But if even parity has been used, we should have an even number. So there must be an error within that byte. Now, we don't know where the error is. Maybe a 1's been transmitted here and it's been corrupted and become a 0. But uh, we know there is an error, so the receiver can contact the transmitter and ask them to resend that one. 
So here's another one for you to pause the video in a moment. Can you complete the diagram using an even parity system? What would you set the parity bit? Okay, so if we use an even parity, we need an even number of ones. The byte itself has got one, two, three. We need to make that even, so we add an extra one to give us four ones. So to summarize, the start bit indicates where the data starts, the stop bit indicates where the data stops, and the parity bit is used, is used to check whether the data is error free.